You know, Mom Kima, Harimba. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. I feel super, super honored uh, to be here with you all um, to and to share my story with you. Thank you, Harkia Native Women Lead, um, for just this opportunity to be here on Transformation Thursday. Um, it's it's just been wonderful to to. Sorry, I have to hit. Got it on this. <laughs> It's just been a wonderful time um, to getting to know the women too at, at uh, Native, women, Native Women Lead, and I'm grateful for them. Um, so thank you so much. And yes, uh, for those that don't know, I'm Janice Lucero, Dahipa, also known as um, Cotton Blossom. I'm from Shehueftoy, that's the Pueblo of Isleta. And uh, before we really get started, I would love to set a small intention um, so if you don't mind, please <clears throat> just relax and close your eyes. Um, and we're going to take three deep breaths, okay? And after each breath, we're going to just say thank you, okay? So we're going to start off. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you and say thank you three more times to yourself because when you showed up you're here you're amazing and you probably do a lot so tell yourself thank you so let's just give ourselves thanks and thank each other for being here tonight um, to be in each other's presence and the space that we have so hadkem 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 so let's get started <laughs> i'm gonna drink some water um before we get started, because I, I, I don't want to have dry lips and I need to have this water. <laughs> so thank you. Um, well, I'm excited to tell you and share with you my story. It's been a journey. This has been literally a journey. And it really started for me back in 2001. Um, I was a young mom. I got married you know, really young, had a baby at 19, and my brother at the time was in college at uh, the University of Hawaii. And he was like, hey, you know, what are you gonna do with your life? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I just had a baby. Um, and he was really like, you know, you should look into information technology. There's a lot of opportunity. Um, it might be something that you might be interested in. And so I did, I actually, I was like, okay, you know, and, and the biggest thing was like, there's money there. It's an ever, it's a, it's a growing industry. So uh, I, I enrolled into class, um, ITT Tech when I was 20. I just had, a, I had a son and I just, you know, I, I went through that whole course and graduated. And uh, a couple of years later, I ended up with my associate's degree in applied science. Um, and decided that I wanted to pursue it. At the time I was working for the Pueblo of Isleta and I was an administrative assistant, um, just answering phones, answering phones and just trying to help people. And so that was part of the reason why I wanted to go back to school too. And, and, and I decided to do that. I went and pursued my bachelor's degree. Um, at this time I had three kids, three small kids and I graduated in 2008 with, with my degree, but it, it, it you know, I, I had a failed marriage at the time and um, it just wasn't a, it wasn't a very good circumstance. And so I had to really get myself going. I really had to find that strength within myself. And so I was really fortunate. I, I was able to capitalize on these skill sets. I was, at, I was, I was really fortunate to get into some of the working sectors in IT. I worked for different many sectors. I worked for a contractor, um, the Alaskan American, or Alaskan American Shenega Global Services, which is a contractor to the Department of Defense. And so along the way, after I, I decided to leave Isleta, that was kind of like my stepping stone um, to leave Isleta and, and pursue something else. And I did, I, I went off to get a security clearance. I got a really high top security clearance and worked at, worked on, on base. I uh, worked for the Space and Missile Command 
and that was really super fun and learned a lot of cool things. I, I was their system administrator and I just really wanted to, my drive was, was to climb the ladder. My drive was to like make money. <laughs> my drive was like, Hey, I'm going to be, you know, good at this. I didn't see a lot of women in this industry. There was no native women, especially indigenous women in this industry. And I was very, um, passionate about wanting to bring more women in. And so in uh, 2016, actually, some unfortunate circumstances happened. Um, along this journey, I, I, developed, I developed some really old beliefs and there was some, there was just some really bad things that I believed about myself. There was some patterns and habits that I created um, through old environments. And in 2016, I, I self-sabotaged myself. And that was part of the downfall uh, for me was I, uh, I drank, I drank a lot. I thought I was a rolling stone, you know? I mean, I thought I was a straight up rolling stone and I wanted to party and, and get out there and <laughs> do my thing. And um, I just was not mature. I just wasn't at a place where I wasn't even taking life serious. Um, and it, and it, it was unfortunate because it's the people that you love the most. So the people that you, that you hurt, and it was my children that I hurt. Um, and in 2016, like I said, it just, I lost everything. I, I rolled my car because of, of, uh, DWI. Um, I went to jail. I lost my children. Um, and that was huge. That was a lot of shame to do, to walk through that because I, I lost them due to the choices, the things I was doing at the time. I lost my job um, and I was literally left with nothing, nothing. And that, at that point, I really had to think about my actions and I really had to think about where I wanted to go at this point, especially with my kids. I probably like many of us, I grew up in a very dysfunctional home and unfortunate things happen. And for a long time, I carried a victim mentality because I lost my mother when, she, when I was really young. I was only eight months old when she died. And uh, the person who I thought cared for me didn't care for me. And I went through years of, of some really bad physical abuse, you know, some things that I, I endured that I didn't understand why. And I questioned those things. And I think part of, again, when you're going through, when you're, when you're growing up and you don't really have that support system and you don't really know the truth, you find yourself attracting other things that are not healthy. And that was where I was at. I was in a place of unhealthiness. I was in a place a real true spiral going down and down. Um, and I, I just couldn't do it to myself anymore. I really couldn't do it to myself. And I, I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get my life right. I'm going to do what I need to do. And I did. I, 2016, I, I um, got hired as a contractor because nobody could hire me because I had a clearance and I, you had to clear all that stuff out. And so I was like, what am I going to do? You know, how am I going to make money? Um, and, and it was just, it, it was just one of those things. I got hired as a contractor to help p and I ended up applying as a contractor to help them be compliant with their audit. Uh, this was operation technology. And they were, a, they were a whole business unit that really specializes in transmission and different sectors of, of the utility um, company. And so that's where I was at. I found myself having to rebuild myself back up. Uh, but I still had this chip on my shoulder. You know, I still had this, um, I still had this ego. I still had this like victim mentality. Poor me, poor me, you know, why me? Um, and I, I carried that for so long in my life. I carried that for so long with because I felt abandoned, because I felt rejected, because of the things that had happened to me, I felt like I deserved some of these things. And it was very toxic. My thinking was toxic. The way I thought was toxic. Um, 
And so I started to just build myself back up, like I said, and at PM, and um, got myself going. I had to work super extra hard because I wanted my kids back. And that's super, super, for me to say this, it takes a lot because as we, as women and mothers, we think to myself, we, we sometimes think to ourselves, like, how can we do this to our kids? Like, how can we, how can we do this? Right. But this happens because we don't have that support. It happens because unfortunate things happen to people. And this that happened, I carried for so long. I, I just carried it. It was like my security blanket. It was like, oh, I'm a victim. Oh, this happened to me. Nobody knows, right? And that was like, I carried that for so long. And then finally, I in 2019, I said, you know what? I'm done. I, I, I'm done with this. I, I made the conscious decision to actually stop drinking. I told myself that I wanted to stop. And there was a lot of things that were happening to, happening to me physically. Um, in my body, I felt it in my body. My body was like slapping me around and telling me, no, you know, don't do that. Don't do that. And it was like, no, I won't, you know, it was just that addiction. And that's where I had to really dig deep. That's where this journey of, of reflection, this journey of healing had really started for me. And I'm 40 years old right now. <laughs> and I'm glad, I'm happy that I made this conscious decision to put me first, but it didn't, it didn't, this didn't happen overnight. Um, in 20, in 2019, I, I also decided that I was going to start a garden. Um, and I did that by myself with my dad, actually, and, and family, we kind of just did it as a hobby. And my family had always, my dad really, you know, he farmed and I just never really was like a part of it. I, I never took the interest to go and really be in it. And uh, in 2020, it was like more, seemed like I had more of an urgency. In 2020, I had COVID, of course, everything was crazy. The pandemic, you know, hit, we were kind of, all of us were like, what's going on? Um, and I ended up contracting COVID. And I, that was really the time that I thought to myself, wow, what a crazy situation to be in that we as individuals are relying on the government to give us food when we can be growing food, when we have the opportunity and the ability and possibly the resources to do that. And that was the time that I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm really gonna think about this garden and I'm gonna, I'm gonna plant. And it just really became, gosh, it really became this, this hub for my family and my friends. And they were just coming and showing up. And I was like, hey, I have a garden. And they were like, really, can I stop by? I'm like, yeah. And I I knew nothing, you know, my son's teaching me how to how to operate a rototiller because I didn't I had no clue you know my dad's like you're using the wrong hoe by the way you're using a painter's hoe you know here's the real hoe <laughs> and it's this big hefty duty hoe you know and I, <laughs> I'm like whoa okay but I learned so much and that really was where my heart started to grow my heart started to grow there and I was just like wow you know I felt something at the garden um and it, and it wasn't, it, you know, again, everything is a process, right? It, the garden just didn't happen. There was a house uh, on the land. There was things that were there that had to get, to get um, taken off, right? That, that we had to really cultivate it. And so I have a PowerPoint for you. I want to show you um, that I made and it's not fancy. It's just pictures of me and my family and some things that are going on, uh, but also just I want to show you some of that progress that I that that happened there at the farm, um, there at the field, my field, and so just quickly going back to this story, in 2020 was really where I felt this urgency to say, okay, 
like I'm, 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 I need to do something. There's something within me that was calling me so, so much that I, I was like, all right. Uh, but not only that, you know, we, we, there was multiple opportunities. There was things that were happening. There was, you know, I went into business with, with one of my most loved cousins and, you know, we started SBS. We were really inspired. And it's funny because Native Women Lead, I volunteered for you guys years back. And one of the things I said was like, I, and I was so inspired by these women who were going up on the present, on, on the stage and talking about their beautiful, uh, you know, endeavors, their, their businesses. And that really inspired me as well uh, to be like, hey, you know, I, I can do something. I can do something with my skill set. Um, and so there was just a lot that was going on at that time. 2020 seemed to be crazy, I'm sure, for everybody. Uh, everybody probably felt something in some way, especially with the anxiety going on and, and not really knowing what to do. And that was like my biggest thing. I was like, all right, I, I'm going to do this. Um, and, and I did that. And then 2020 as well, um, you know, there was just, there was a lot of things happening. We saw, we had our own tribal elections and, you know, there was people here who had an interest to collectively start a nonprofit uh, grassroots. And um, we did that. We did that. We did that collectively. We did that with Jen and a couple of other beautiful people here on here today and it wasn't just me there was this collective of individuals who had this want to be change and ipva was started in 2020 to bring awareness to our community to empower people to vote to empower people to get out there and you know just just really advocate and be more aware of of what's going on and so that was really cool and it's still happening today. Um, we still have IPVA. <laughs> we just met and I'll tell you more about that later. Uh, and so, yeah, there was just a lot of cool things that really started, doors started to open when I finally said, okay, I am done. And it seems so long ago that I resigned my position uh, with PM, but it was only seven months ago. I, I still can't believe that it was only seven months ago. Um, and it was just, a, it was, a, it was, I felt really good about it. I just didn't like showing up anymore. I just didn't, I wasn't passionate. There was too many demanding things on my plate. I was a one woman, woman show for three years. The money was great. I felt like I finally was at a place that I was like, Hey, this is success. You know, I made it and I got my promotion and I got my raise and and I got my, my big salary, but in reality, it was horrible. In reality, I wasn't happy. In reality, I was, I didn't wanna show up anymore at work. And it wasn't fair to my employer and it wasn't fair to me. And I made that conscious decision on June 17th, I believe of 2021 to resign my position. And I saw this post right after that, or before that, before I even made this transition, um, I saw this post for a hike leader or hike crew leader for ancestral lands. And I was like, oh man, it's like, wouldn't that be so cool? Like, I wish I could do that. Like, I wish I could go out and be this hike crew leader and take these kids out and, and like, what a, what a cool job. And I applied for the job. <laughs> knowing that I knew I was going to take a big pay cut, I, that was the decision that I made. Um, that was where I had to shift the mindset for me. That was really, a, that was really one of the places where I said, okay, you know, it's not about money. It's not, it's not about me chasing this money. And I did that for so long, for so long, I chased money. Why? Because I felt like it bought me power because I felt like there was a value. I could buy whatever. And I would, I made this image up. I made up my own image. I had old beliefs. I lived in the world. I was conformed by, by the world, by, by different things. 
And that's what I focused on. It wasn't about giving back. It wasn't about having true purpose. This was really a selfish thing for myself. Um, and that was kind of hard to really face. And I was like, can I make it? Can I make, can I actually make it with my, you know, being a single mom? Um, can I make this? And I, I did, I actually did. And it was, it was really cool. I had the support uh, from a lot of people, but it wasn't about the support from people. It was really about how I felt. It was about the feeling of me being happy. And that's where I was at. I wanted to be happy. And little behold that these, these beautiful youth uh, who were part of this hiking program, part of it was to mentor them during this. And I worked with Rob Mariano, who is the who was my supervisor at the time with Ancestral Lands. And it's funny, we're all related because he's my cousin. Um, really super sweet guy. And, and Brittany Lujan, you know, who I just really love. And she was part of that program, putting this together for the hiking, for the hiking club and to come into their space and feel welcome and to really see what the um what the goal was for the for these children was amazing and every single day i woke up during that time looking forward to seeing these these beautiful youth and to hang out with with you know Brittany and I mean, we had it's crazy when you really let your ego down and you can be relatable how much you can make a difference in people's lives when you just listen when you just allow them to be themselves, when you're not trying to conform them or you're not trying to have them believe anything, right? You're just allowing them to talk and be themselves. And that's what I loved about the whole hiking, the whole hiking uh, club was we allowed these beautiful youth to be themselves, to say whatever, but to explore. And little did they know Little did they know that they were part of my own healing. They were part of my own healing. That inner child who was broken, that inner child who just wanted to be loved and heard, wanted the attention, wanted to just hang out and, and be free. They did that for me. They did that for me. And I, I you know, I, I know I've probably told Brittany. <laughs> a few times, like I cried, you know, I just, I would just cry because it was so happy and they just, they touched my heart. Um, and that was just one of the things that, that opened up, you know, the last, last year when, when I left and again, right, just finding the right people. Then of course, you know, 2020, 2021, there was Pueblo resurgence that I uh, got to really work with. And, and it, that's been really super cool. We've, we've been this collective of, this collective of farmers, but I don't think we're even farmers, <laughs> even though we say we're farmers, um, because it's so much deeper than that. It's so much deeper than, than farming and what Pueblo Resurgence has done for me and, and Kateri and Rue and everybody that's in, in there, Jasmine, those are all the people in the background that are making things happen, that are going out and finding these grants. But there's also this beautiful trust and vulnerability that we've all created with each other. Uh, before, I don't, I, you know, seriously, I, I really do believe that people do come into our lives for a reason. And I believe they came into my life to help me, they, they, this wasn't just for farming, we, you know, Pueblo Resurgence provided, of course, technical support, some financial assistance, but the biggest thing was there was profession, I'm sorry, personal development. There was uh, a workshop that he introduced that, you know, we all did. And our brother, his brother, but I'm calling him our brother because we're all brothers and sisters anyways, Colby Tatusis, we, we did a workshop called Rise, which really helped me um, learn about these awarenesses. I have these, you know, it helps me, it helped me really learn about 
things that that non-personal awareness, right? Um, really being vulnerable with each other was something that I, I really cherished. And so, yes, please. Um, sorry. <laughs> so yes, I, I just really enjoyed the time that I've been working with everybody in, in this space. And that's what I believe that this has done is we've, we've developed beautiful spaces for each other. They're not big, they're small, but that's because it allows us to be open with each other. There's no judgment there. Um, and so I talk, I also talk, we, we did a podcast, uh, Pueblo Resurgence and us, you know, we did a lot of cool things this past year. We did the radical food distribution. Thank you, Jen. Um, we, we sold at markets. We also collectively did a, um, we did story writers that we bought into the Pueblo. And again, that was just a lot of great fun to just engage with our, our youth and take them out and, you know, really have them experience what nature is, what nature is about. And I believe that's what this is, right? When we connect back with our mother, um, that's, that was really the healing part for me was of course the children, but the farming to go back and touch the land, to go back and just find out who I was. I, I, I had a lot of missing questions and that's where this work helped me break down these barriers of my own ego, you know, my own, just where I was at. It wasn't a, it wasn't a good place. Um, and it really helped me just build that confidence as well. And to really share this message with you all and to really share this journey because it has been, it's been tough. I, I did a, we did a podcast interview with the Antis Dandelion, I want to say back in January um, or December of last year. And the question, she, you know, she asked us about the work, our work that we're doing um, and the transition. And, and I was really honest. I said the transition for me from going car to corporate to where I am now has, has been, it's been hard. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not going to lie to you guys. And the reason why I say it was hard was because it wasn't hard physically. It was hard emotionally and it was hard um, mentally. Again, when you build up this image, when you're in the world, that's what happened. That's where I was at. I didn't even understand how much I had been so engulfed in the world and all these things that I had value. They had no value. All of that belief system had no value to who I really truly was until I started to do this work, until I started to be in service without any expectation. When we are in service there, and especially when we're in service with each other and the collective mind comes together, there are infinite possibilities, but you yourself, when you tap in to who you truly are, there are infinite possibilities. And that's what I had to do. I had to descend so that I can ascend. We all sometimes have to descend. We have to dig out some of those roots that have been planted that weren't even probably planted by us. Lies that weren't even, that aren't even true. Belief systems that aren't even true. Those are the things where we start to discover who we are. All of us are meant for greatness. All of us come with uniqueness and beauty. But until we embrace who we are and truly love who we are, how can we give love when we can't, how can we, yeah, how can we give love when we don't even have love? We have to, we have to go deep, deep down. And, and sometimes it's ugly and sometimes it's hard. And those were my truths. This is what I learned through this whole process is that I am not what people told me I was years ago. I am not a failure. I am not a bad mom. I am not all those things. I am not. 
And when you start to go deep down inside, the soil, your heart is the foundation. The heart needs help. Why? Because we put blockages, we've closed doors, resentment, hate, abandonment. And sometimes we don't touch those things, we suppress it. We suppress it and we suppress it and we don't wanna feel, so we numb ourselves and we continue to numb ourselves. And I did that for years with alcohol, years. And it took some of the most precious things away from me. And I said, no more, I am the master of my own destiny. I am the master of my own self. And when you start to show up for yourself every single day and you give yourself 100%, again, infinite possibilities, infinite possibilities. The work starts in here. The work starts when you start to believe in yourself and you start to love yourself the way you're supposed to love yourself. It's not about materialistic things. We can have all that. I had it all. Didn't make me happy. It gave me stability at that time. But what I needed, what I really truly needed was I really, really needed people to understand me, but I really needed to dig deep and go in within myself. And it's when you're ready, nobody can tell you when to go deep. <laughs> when you're ready, when you feel like you're at a place that you can no longer ignore the calls of your soul that's calling you, you have a passion. You don't wanna be 15, 20 years still thinking about the dream and the vision that you once had saying, oh, I, I wish I could have did that. Why not do it now? What's stopping you? Is it fear? Because fear is your biggest nemesis and fear was my biggest nemesis. Fear is what holds all of us back. When we operate in fear, we cannot move. It's stagnant. You're not going anywhere, you're frozen. I've been frozen for a long time. And I had to look fear in the face. And I said, not today, fear. <sighs> not today. You're not going to be the ruler of my life. I am not going to be scared to be judged. I'm not going to be scared to do what I am called to do and the things that I love to do. Because when you start doing the work, when you start really doing that work, you're going to see so many different changes in yourself. Your mind changes. There's a shift, a mind shift. You're no longer telling yourself all those things. Why? Because you found your power. Why? Because it's time for you to awaken. It's time for you to step out of the shell. This body is only a shell. We are more than this body. And it's time that we start to invest, invest in your own spirituality. Invest, invest, I'm sorry, invest in yourself. I could go and buy me a hundred dollar pair of shoes. I love shoes. But you know what? I'm gonna invest in myself. I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna spend the time that I need to meditate. I'm going to go and do the things that I love. I'm going to paint. I'm going to draw because those are all the beautiful things that we all have inside of us. Each of us have a beautiful, unique gift. And when you tap into it, guess what? You're the creator. You're the creator. You are now the creator of your own reality. Shift the thinking. Shift it to, to being positive, to being happy. We don't need to throw shade. We don't need to always be right. We don't. Sometimes, and this is what I've learned through the work that I've been doing, the work that I've been doing on myself, but the work that I've been doing with each individual in my community. Community is 
we think of community sometimes as, oh my gosh, we have to be in this one community, but community is creating the people around you. Community is who are you attracting? What type of vibration and, and frequency are you putting out to magnetize the people to bring into you to help you ascend? And these people, right? Make sure there's sunshine. Make sure there's sunshine, that they bring added value to your life, that they support you, that they love you, that they tell you all those beautiful things. Because when you don't have those genuine people in your life, that's hard. Because now you're having a fight to bring and raise your frequency and vibration up. But when you have people that are on the same level as you, guess what? You're harmonizing. You're making beautiful music. The instruments are playing at the best, best optimal speed. And, and, and everybody's in tune. And this is what we need. In order for it to be change, we have to change. We have to change. Be kind. It starts by what are you telling yourself? Healing is what are you telling yourself? How are you healing yourself? What are you saying to yourself? Because that's important. That's where it starts. Starts with what are you telling yourself? Are you telling yourself all those things? It's not good, right? Your projection, your projection is your reflection of your energy. Right? What does that mean? Your projection is your reflection of your energy. That means that whatever you're projecting out is your reflection of who you are and the energy that you're holding in. So if I'm, I'm, it's my, it's, I have, I'm having a bad day and, and, you know, I don't know, something happened, right? And my energy is, it's, it's, you can feel it. Guess what? I'm attracting that. I'm attracting that type of energy to me. Get out of that space. It's easy, but it's not easy. <laughs> it's easy to say, but it's not easy to do because to do it, right? It takes practice. And these are the things that I've learned over time to help me get to where I'm at, to help me to be healthy, to help me have a healthy mind. It didn't, it, I, I, this is everyday stuff. We go to the gym, we lift weights. We, we go have our routines. We, we all probably have different routines. Make yourself a routine. Make the time to spend with yourself. Go outside. Get away from social media. Remember, you're a magnet. You're an antenna. Do you think that this here, it's the same thing, right? It has frequency. So how do you know what you're picking up? How do you know if you're not picking up bad vibes from the guy down the road or the cat down the road or the dog down the road right he may not been he may have be hung he might be hungry <laughs> somebody feed the dog he's got bad vibes he's barking at me he's making me mad right <laughs> so it's just practice these things practice what you tell yourself go outside find the things that you love and, and choose those things, choose it, choose to be happy, you know, thank you, thank you, I probably went off a little bit too much, but uh, I didn't get to show the, the slideshow, um, and we can possibly go through that before some questions, but thank you all so much for your time, thank you for listening. And I just leave you with just some, just some words of encouragement. And those words, are, words of encouragement is embrace uniqueness, embrace each other in kindness, because we are all unique. I'm not going to have the same perspective as you. 
You are not going to look the same as me. But you know what? I can, I can embrace you because you are my sister. You are my brother. And because what I project is love. I don't want, I don't want to have that, those bad vibes. I don't want to be the dog over there barking, yelling at everybody, you know, getting everybody all riled up. Come on. <laughs> Um, yes, you're welcome. Thank you, uh, Jen. I, I'm sorry we didn't get to the PowerPoint. Um, do you want to show that real quick? I know we have a few more minutes, but real quickly. Thank you, Iris. My daughter's on and um, just really grateful for everybody. You guys really just, you know, I'm honored. I'm really honored to be here in your presence. I'm honored. So thank you for being and taking the time out of your day to be here. Uh, so I didn't get to talk about Con Blossom Gardens. <laughs> that was, I founded last year. Um, you know, I, I love what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm loving this new journey. Cultivate, blossom, grow. That's the mission statement. Cultivating relationships, blossoming into ascension and growing community. And the mission, our purpose is to cultivate meaningful relationship with, with ourselves, friends, family, community, and Mother Earth, living by the core values of love, respect, gratitude, equality, compassion, and unity. We strive to help the world blossom into ascension. We are growing stronger kinships to provide a better tomorrow for the next generations to come. And again, we talked about just cultivation and uh, I just real quickly, um, yeah, here's, here's some pictures here. Um, that's the house, like I said, you know, things take time. That's, that was a few years ago on the field. Those are some of the beans we grew and just people, I would love, you know, just look out for some events y'all cause I'll be posting pretty soon on my website. This, this has been wearing, I mean, this, business stuff literally is you're wearing so many different hats and I'm learning how to really be better at uh, managing a lot of these things. <laughs> so yeah, and, and just before we leave to um, before you guys start, or if you have any questions, I just want to say one thing with let's, let's just heal ourselves. Okay. Take the time to do that. And the reason why is because when we have healthy people, when you heal yourself and we heal our grandmas and our daughters and our mothers, we can heal the planet. We can heal the planet. And that's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing that we need more individuals like us who care and have, have passion to fight for what's right and to fight for these things that we value and love so much. And that, that was one thing that I learned when I was on, that, on the field over the summer was, man, I, to value, to see myself as a child in our mother's eyes was really something. Why? Was because she's still providing. And during this whole journey, yes, I lost stuff. There was things that I, I had no money at one point. And I have people here in this, in this group who came through and, and lifted me up and said, don't worry. But not only that, but our mother and our father in the spiritual sense was there. She provided everything I needed. I didn't go without food because I could grow it. But it taught me so much. And it taught me that we are still connected that umbilical cord is still connected to our mother, all of each and every single one of us. The trees, the animals, and everything that's out there, we're still connected. She's still providing. And we have to give thanks. This is this, so important. I love the work that some of these organizations are doing. Why? Because we have to fight for what we have. The value of our water, our sky, our earth, our animals. And until we value, truly value and say thank you, we're going to continue to destroy her. 
And we're not, we cannot do that. Now is the time. We keep, we can't, we keep saying that, but now is the time guys. It's time. It's time to take your stand up, stand up and rise because it's in, these are, these are times where we are going to have to really protect what has always been here for us because there might be a time that it's not going to be. Thank you everybody for again just coming out uh, real quick. You can, uh, if you want to reach me, please do. I am at uh, Cotton Blossom Gardens. I have a website, Instagram. Please follow me on Instagram. Also, get involved. Just get involved. I put some of my favorite organizations up here. People that I work with, that I that I support. Um, of course, Pueblo Resurgence. Please donate if you can. Um, support the cause. IPVA, Isleta Pueblo Voters Alliance. Um, you know, this is the year, guys. This is the year. So get involved. Become a volunteer. New Mexico Community Capital, which uh, has, they're doing amazing things. If you are an entrepreneur and you're looking to grow your business, check them out, guys. They are, they are amazing. Great team of people. The Coalition to Stop Violence Against Native Women. Um, I love them. They're a great team. I've done work for them. Another, another one just to support. And then of course the Public Action Alliance also, right? Just fighting and act and, and really just getting out there and being an activist and bringing awareness and doing really great, great work as well. Native Women Lead, I love these ladies. Thank you all, you are all beautiful. And the work that you do as well is very appreciative. And I'm very grateful for you all. There are probably other, there's probably a lot more. I know, um, there's the Valencia Water Watchers. Uh, there's a few more that I also that that I'm you know in with, and so just it's your choice. But but get out there, be in service, be in service to each other, because it feels good. It feels good. Thank you. All right, Hakan Janu, thank you so much for that. That was so beautiful. Um. I'm going to open it up now to anyone who has a comment, a question. Um, Reyes, yes, I see your hand up. If you want to go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Janice Devanopa. Um, I really appreciated your words this evening. And what I just wanted to share, you know, that I think it's very good for us to see our own public relatives and our matriarchs be so vulnerable with each other, but then also talk about accountability, you know, because that's also a part of healing and growing and building community. And I just, what really resonated with me tonight was the piece of your projection is your reflection of who you are and the energy you hold. You know, I think that is a very good um, way to put it because you know, we're tired of seeing like the lateral violence that happens within our community. And, you know, I support you and the work that you're doing. And thank you so much for also shouting out Pueblo Action Alliance. And thank you to Native Women Lead for opening up this space this evening. Hadkem, Hadkem for your words and your support. Um, just so happy that you were able to join us tonight. And I'm, I'm glad that we can support you too. Yes, I echo those words, Hedgam, so much. Um, anybody else have any reflections, thoughts, questions? I have one. Uh, my name is Cindy. Good evening. Hi, Janice. <laughs> yeah, good, good evening from Phoenix. So I, I lived in uh, Albuquerque for, what, several years, and I got a chance to uh, work with Janice. Um, so we, we, uh, we, we kind of um, shared some information as far as culture. And um, yeah, I, I joined in you know, a little bit later. Um, so I kind of missed up or missed uh, the initial uh, presentation tonight. But um, I was trying to hurry up with our dinner and um, I was just telling my husband and my daughter how Janice 
the lucero is such you know, she carries this energy and the person before you know i mentioned that so that that tells you that um you know that energy you know some people have it some people try to get attain that positive energy and from my from what i'm hearing and what i know about janice um you, you're really passionate you, you even really uplift my um spirit pretty much so i i'm navajo from north of monument valley utah and um i you know like janice is saying it's so hard to um you know live your life you know I, i've been in the military i've been you know all over the world but yet i still go back to you know the core of native america right native being native american um so and, and i i i juggle you know the out i call it outside off the reservation world and then um i also try to keep that culture you know, and I try to teach my um, my daughter, my nephews, nieces, and it's hard, um, but at least I'm trying. Um, so I just want to want to share that um, with you, um, you know, everyone that's on on the presentation, and and um, yeah, Janice, I always want to talk more with you about, and and I didn't even know, you know, you you had this go, you just like, oh, you'll see it, you'll see it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is what it's about. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm really for you. I think you'll do great. And um, yeah, let's catch up one of these days. Um, yeah, when I do visit New Mexico again. So, and, and likewise, if you're ever in town in Phoenix, you know, you're welcome to eat with us at our house. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I love it. Thank you so much, Cindy, for joining. And um, I appreciate your kind words. And I really enjoyed working with you when I worked with you. And so I'm glad you made it tonight. Yes, thank so happy. you. So happy. Again, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining. I know it's about that dinner time hour. And so, <laughs> yes, we really appreciate I mean, joining us um, even just for a little bit. So thank you so much. Um, we have about three minutes left. Um, just wanted to um, just thank you again. Good do. <laughs> As I had mentioned earlier um, at the introduction of this event, um, John is my cousin. We're, um, we're actually related, but you know, she's my sister, cousin, homegirl, everything. <laughs> um, and I'm just so grateful for your words, your wisdom, this healing energy um, and connection that you really brought to our community tonight. So welcome so much. I um, feel like I can rest well tonight. So thank you so much. <laughs> we all can rest well, I think, right? But I appreciate yeah. you all. And um, man, what a what a great opportunity to have tonight with every one of you. And keep up the good work. Each and every one of you brings something special to the table, and you're all doing something so good. So don't allow fear. Don't allow fear. Remember, you tell fear in the face, right? Not today, fear. <laughs> Not today. Um, because we we all bring beauty and we are to just really love one another. And I think that's hard sometimes, you know, when we are in that ego, we're in, when we're in the ego of, of who we are. And so I would love to talk more about that, um, you know, just working, being in the ego and there's a duality to that, right? So there's balance that needs to come to that when we work so much in the ego and um, being, being in light. And so the enlightenment is really what's going to help you. Um, and if you choose to be enlightenment, enlightened, you know, you're going to grow and allow yourself to make these mistakes. Don't beat yourself up. They're all growing pains. That's how I looked at it. They're growing pains. So you're all growing into these beautiful people 
and uh, just keep growing, you know, you're just keep growing. I, I do have one announcement. Um, I'm excited to share with you all that uh, soon. I haven't yet. This is just an announcement. I have to put up the flyer. I will be hosting a mini uh, four week workshop and the workshop really consists. Uh, it's more personal. It's going to be capped. There's eight people um, because I, I really do believe that this work with each other um, is is it's a lot. And so it's your story, it's your journey, but you know, we do have, I have a couple of tools. I have my beautiful cousin, Jen, who is a licensed um, physical uh, behavioral health uh, therapist. And, you know, she's helped me along this way with some of the tools that I've used. Um, and so I want to be able to give this back and it's free because love is free. And if we can gift the, if we can gift love, and it's free. Let's do that. Let's gift everyone love. So I will be putting that up soon. Please look out for it on my website on the Instagram page. It's called Plant and Love. It's a four week um, mini workshop slash personal development in a way. It's just kind of like I said, awarenesses. You may have already have these awarenesses, but it just might help you. So I appreciate you all, Hudkam, thank you. I love you all. Thank you for coming tonight. And I'm excited to see you sometime, hopefully if I get to see you and, and um, we get to hang out. So uh, please stay in, please stay in um, contact. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you everybody for joining us tonight.